Good evening, everyone. Hi, Rob. Hi. Yes, I can hear you, Rob. You hear me? Yes, I can. I can hear you, Rob. Very good. <laughs> it has turned cold here in Michigan. Oh, already cold. It's turned cold. Mm -hmm. Yeah, New York is still warm. Oh, is Somewhat it? warm. New York is still warm. Somewhat warm. I guess that tomorrow... It just comes and goes. We have uh, we have all four seasons during one day right now. <laughs> Where in New York do you live? I am in Westchester. I live close to your um and to I? your daughter. Oh really? Yeah. What is I your actually name? visit, visit uh, I take classes with your daughter. What is your Miriam? name? Nilu. Nilu, oh, okay. Nilu, yes. I take, uh, go to um, the, to her, uh, David Lepkowski's Chabad, to Rabbi David Lepkowski. And so I take the women's classes with Miriam, your daughter. All right. Send me my best. Absolutely. <laughs> There's another one on your stand there. My, good luck. Good luck in there. Okay, let us begin. We are still in the laws of the Kiddush. Let me get my page I'm looking for. As we said yesterday, that one should not be. Um, once uh, you accept Shabbos and Friday night candles, one should not be eating or drinking anything until Kiddush is made. We did that. We talked about Kiddush Machum Suda, the Kiddush. When you make Kiddush, you must eat something substantial. And as we know, there's a Friday night Kiddush, which we always make right before we eat the regular meal. That's usually not problematic. The problem is usually the Kiddush and Shul on Shabbos. If you have Kiddush and Shul on Shabbos, in order to fill the mitzvah of Kiddush, which is being said by the person you're listening to, you have to have something substantial. That would be a piece of cake. You have to eat a kazayas, which is approximately an ounce of cake. Or just take some, uh, some drinks, or take a, a piece of herring, or you fill the fish. That's not enough. Talking about that. We also said um, okay, we mentioned that if you make kiddish, we wash our hands. Sorry for the interruption, but I, I have to admit you, otherwise I don't know my computer requires that. So after we make the Kiddush, we wash our hands until the time, as I mentioned um, last week, that um, washing your hands is required when you get up in the morning. When you get up in the morning, you, the morning, you gotta wash your hands from a vessel. And you have to put three times, alternating right, left, right, left, right, left. Or if you're left knee, it's left, right, left, right, left, right. And then when you eat Hamotzi, you also have to uh, wash your hands, but then you don't alternate. Most people, when they make a mozi, will wash on the right hand two times and left hand two times. Again, if you left, you see the way around. Chabad, we do three times on the right, three times on the left, but we're not alternating. We alternate only when we get up in the morning. And then we wash because then we're alternating right, left, right, left. But for uh, Friday night kiddish, if the kiddish we wash, we do not alternate. As I said, most people will do 
uh, two on the right, two on the left. There are other times they're supposed to wash your hands. Suppose they wash your hands when you leave the bathroom. Uh, if, if you're leaving yourself, you're supposed to wash your hands. After a shower, you're supposed to wash your hands. Uh, if they're, if they're, if they're uh, taking a, uh, a haircut, you're supposed to wash your hands. If they're, uh, if they're paring your nails, Husband and wife have to wash themselves before and after intimacy. In all these situations, it is advisable to use a cup. But the only time you have to use a cup is when you get up in the morning and when you wash for Hamosi. The other times, it suggests to use a cup. But if you don't have a cup, but, uh, if you don't have a cup you just wash your hands under the faucet, it is. Not as good, but it's sufficient. So he says, when you wash, you have to washing. We um, we'll make that mostly. It's important not to talk. If you wash your hands, don't talk until you actually make that mostly and eat the challah. And by the way, when you wash your hands, the only time you make a bracha of washing hands is before you eat bread. And upon getting up in the morning, you get up in the morning, you wash your hands, and go back and go to dine. We relieve ourselves, and then we wash again. We come out of the bathroom, we go to dine, then we make a bracha, and shake the shadow, and says, I'm going to go to dine. Thank God for giving us this mitzvah of the washing hands. But that bracha is only said two times. When, when you wash your hands for bread, we get up in the morning. But when you wash your hands after leaving the bathroom or taking a shower or repairing your nails or cutting your hair or intimacy, then there's no bracha that is made. We mentioned uh, uh, you wash your hands and make a mosi. And you, eat, you have two rolls of bread in front of you. As we mentioned last week, one corresponding, and of course, when the Jews were in the desert, there were um, the month fell each and every day. And Friday was a double portion. So to honor the double portion of Friday, which we call the Shabbat on Shabbos, we, want, we eat two breads on Friday night, and we have two breads on Shabbos. We don't have to cut both breads. We don't, we don't have to cut one of the breads, but the bread should be uh, whole breads, not sliced. Now, some people who are not supposed to, some people who are not supposed to take wine will make Kiddush Friday night over challah. And that is valid. Now, also, you have certain people who have. Uh, they can't have gluten-free diets. And they can't have a mozi. What do you do then? So if you're gluten-free and you're strict gluten-free, then if you take an entire cup of wine, four ounces of wine, according to many opinions, four ounces of wine fills you up. And therefore, it is the um, equivalent of taking some bread. The amount of bread you have to take we make a mosi, is at least a kazayas. Kazayas is approximately an ounce. An ounce of bread is like one, I guess one slice of uh, rye bread would be, would be an ounce of bread, one and a half slices. But just to take a bite or two bites of the bread is not good enough. So if you're gluten free and you don't want to have any bread or can't have any bread, then you'll take a four ounces of wine, and that will be in place of the bread. Now, once you wash your hands, you wash your hands, you make the bread, I don't think you done by wiping your hands, and you're not supposed to talk until you make the mozi, but if you do talk, you can still make that mozi and eat the bread. The only time there's a problem with this eruption, as you make a mozi, let's say, and you don't eat the bread right away, 
you get a telephone call, you get a, a cell phone, phone call, you make that most, you get a cell phone call, you pick it up and you answer, then that bracha you made of the bread is invalid because you made the bracha, you made the blessing, and instead of eating right away, you interrupt it with, with a telephone call. Can't do that. And if you did do it, you got to make the emotion again. The other hand, the person made, washed their hands for bread and made the bohalim to the shadayim. Thank you, God, for giving us a mitzvah of washing our hands, to which we're able to connect with God. So really, you're supposed to then go and make a motion to eat bread. But before making the motion, you interrupted with some words. So even though it shouldn't be done, but if you did do it, it doesn't invalidate any bracha. As opposed to a person making a mochi of bread and not eating until they have to take a fielding a, a telephone call, then you're making a mochi. Because the mochi is going on the bread, not on a telephone call. We mentioned that the person who makes the kid should drink what's called a red revius. Majority of a revius, a log. Revius is around. According to most many says, around uh, four, three and a half ounces, four ounces. That's how it is. Total vigors of the log. It's a volume measure, for a liquid measure. Um, so you, you should be the one making the kiddush. Should uh, should be making should drink a little, a little more than half of four ounces. So it's around two two uh, two and a half ounces. If the person making kiddush. Is compromised in his uh, health, uh, uh, sugar issues, can't take wine, can't take grape juice. So, someone around the table who's fulfilling the mitzvah by hearing the kiddish from the person making kiddish, as long as someone is listening and that person who's listening drinks most of the cup, more than two ounces of the cup, then everyone around the table has to fulfill the mitzvah. But you got to be at least one person drinking most of the cup. Again, most of the cup, uh, if you have a four ounce cup, most of the cup is around two and a half ounces. But only one person has to do that. And the rest of the people around the table don't have to take anything, but the custom is people around the table, we give them a small amount, each person around the table. That's the custom. So therefore, it goes back to the issue. Person make kiddush of a cup of wine, and before drinking it, he finishes the kiddush. But before drinking it, he someone asks him a question. He answers the question. Then the, the, they have to make a new bread for your because you have an interruption between the hagafen and you're drinking it, and that interruption nullifies the bracha you've made. Well, let's say a person made a, a bracha over wine, and it uh, applies every day. Let's say a bracha over wine, over, over um, soda, over coffee, and the soda spills on the floor, and you have none left. Then they bring new soda from the refrigerator. So, on the new so, so you got to make a new bracha because the initial bracha that you made was negated by the fact that the um, Wine, whatever it was, wine and soda fell on the ground. And now, therefore, you have a, a new brother be made. So, which brings us to the next question. And that is if a person can't drink wine, a person who drinks wine, as you explained in the base of Mingdash, in the Holy Temple, Sacrifices were accompanied with wine libation. They would pour, put a sacrifice on the altar. And that sacrifice was necessary to send the person a message that if you have sinned, the obligation is to surrender yourself to God in a more intense way. And that's what a sacrifice is all about. So if a sacrifice an animal reminds us of our need to surrender ourselves, sacrifice our needs to the needs that God placed in front of us, and in this minute's time, when they offered a the sacrifice, it was accompanied with wine. That wine was not grape juice. It was wine that packed 
you know, pack some strength to it. And it was, uh, that's some alcoholic content to it. And what it tells us, this story portion talks about God says, Moses, I will redeem the Jews. And God mentions four different expressions of redemption. Is Vitsati, I will save them. We talk, uh, save them and take them out and redeem them and bring them onto me as a nation. Four expressions of redemption. And Talmud Shami says, as you from Talmud says, that's why we have four cups of wine. The number four on Pesach night, the number four is critical. We have four cups of wine. We have four questions. Four is very important. And um, why wine? Why do you focus on wine? Because wine, special wine which has a little alcohol to it, opens you up a bit. You know, you, many, many of your inhibitions fall away when you take a little wine. and allows you to be freer and express yourself more freely. Certainly if you take too much wine, it's very destructive. But they... A small amount of wine is very constructive, not destructive. So if a person can't drink wine, so let's come back to the idea of Kiddush. Uh, ideally, the Kiddush should follow the wine in the basic English, which was not grape juice, it was wine. But if you can't take the alcohol and wine for medical reasons, then the fallback position is take grape juice. Even though grape juice is not... Uh, have the kick that wine has. Doesn't have that kind of content to it at all. Nonetheless, the fallback position is we take grapes. That's the fallback position. It's certainly not the way we should try to go about it. But if a person doesn't have, can't, uh, doesn't, uh, his stomach doesn't agree with wine or grape juice either, can have either. What do you do then? So you have the option of making kiddush over hamosi, over bread. Put it in the Kiddush. Or there's the option of drinking what's called Chamar Medina. Chamar Medina means any other popular liquid in your region, which people would serve um, to guess because it's going to be a, an important beverage. You have a guest coming, you're not going to necessarily give them prune juice. You'll give them, um, you give them soda, soda pop. So in many opinions, soda pop is on the same, almost on the same level as wine. And if you can't drink wine for medical reasons, or you don't have wine around, then soda, Coke, Pepsi are considered to be important beverages. But if you have someone coming from out of town or a friend coming, you offer them soda, you offer them uh, perhaps some Pepsi or Coke, you wouldn't be ashamed of doing that. The difference called Chamar Medina, it's called the wine that's become popularized in that region. But this idea of using soda. Some people make it over beer. It's only a fallback position. But if you have wine, you shouldn't be using wine. You should not be using anything else. When the Jews came built, back to build the second holy temple, they were led by Ezra the Sofer. We're talking about 2,400 years ago. So the rabbis then gave us the blessings. During the first holy temple, people were much more spontaneous. They didn't have to have rabbis make up blessings. But the blessings that we make and the anima that we dial in, that came from the Rabbis of the Great Assembly, second base of the English. And they gave us that they have Havdala and Kiddush. And they say, you don't have to make, initially they said, you don't have to make Havdala of wine, because wine was so scarce, people didn't have any money. People were, uh, uh, to, to aid them, they were very, very poor. And if a people do not have money for wine for Abdullah, they put the, they put their less pennies together for wine for Kiddush. But they didn't simply not have money for both, for wine for Abdullah and wine for Kiddush. 
So when Ezra came to rebuild the second holy temple, Ezra was a Renaissance man. Ezra was the Moshe Rabbeinu of his time. Moshe Rabbeinu led the Jews in the land of Israel, where he almost had let him in, knocking on the door. So he was going to start what we call the first Jewish Commonwealth, which lasted 850 years. Then he was just going to exile for 70 years. The one to bring him back will be Ezra. And he is a no nonsense person. And he saw the deprivation that most Jews had to deal with. And therefore, he said, You make, you make Havdola, but you don't have to make Havdola for wine. You put into, incorporate into the davening. And Saturday night davening, there's a mention of Havdola. Havdola means separation. God gave a separation between light and dark, night and day, Shabbos and a weekday. The initial Abdullah was not made of wine, but then Jews on the second old temple got wealthier and they were able to afford wine. They always said, you know, just like Kirish has is over wine, let's make sure that Abdullah is also over wine. Let's have that Abdullah over wine. But people initially were very, very poor. So if a person doesn't have enough money for wine, then a person can use soda pop or any other sort of a beverage, which is a popular beverage, and considered to be, considered to be an important beverage, where, where you invite your friends over and certainly put out a container, a jar of um, a bottle of, of soda pop, of Coke, Pepsi. Also, when it comes to the same grace at the mills. And said the grapes, when the grapes are said, there's a million of people there, we say it over wine. Sarah Bosom will mention the special mitzvah to do it over wine, because wine, as I said, is um, it opens you up, takes down some of your uh, inhibitions. As I said, that's the reason this historic portion of God talks about redeeming the Jews to motion. He uses four expressions the Hisalti, the Hotsesi, the Lakakti, the Valti. He's talking about how to save them. I'll take them out, redeem them, and take them on to me as a nation. Four different expressions of redemption, of freedom. And as I said, wine makes you a bit freer, and you're able to, therefore, um, remove some of those inhibitions that you have and look at yourself in a much more honest way because your defenses are down. Now, if you have a situation where a person doesn't drink wine because they have health issues or diabetes, but they're the only ones who can make the kiddish, so they can make the kiddish and say the birth of birth often, and someone else will drink the two ounces. And they say you have to do more than two ounces. So you can make the kiddish if, you're, if you like making kiddish. And someone else has to listen to your kiddish and fulfill the message through your kiddish. Then you can take that wine which you want to drink and give it to your friend who will drink the, the two and a half ounces of wine and give the rest to the people around the table. That's fine. As I said before, the kiddish must be, um, must be, when you run a kiddish, you have to. Eat with it some, something substantial. Substantial means something, whether it's a mostly bread or usually in the afternoon kiddush and shul, people will take some cake. But cake is quite substantial, but not potato pudding, not kugel, not, um, not herring. Because that's not, herring is the shakol, Potato kugel is a hadoma. In halakhic terms, something substantial is always something which comes to the five grains. Five grains are oat, a, a wheat, and barley, and rye, and spelt, and oats. Those are five grains Israel is known for. So, in order for kiddush to be valid, you have to make the kiddush or hear, hear kiddush and else and take some cake. I said, or at least an ounce of cake or an ounce of bread. Or cookies, any or any sort of pasta. That's called kiddish makom tuda. It's called kiddish in the same place where you eat. You got to eat in the same place, same room. You can't hear kiddish in one place, 
and downstairs in the shul, and then uh, you take your cup upstairs and you eat the, your cake upstairs in the shul or in the library. The kiddush that you make and the food you eat, you're in the same place. And it must be something substantive, substantial. And therefore, as I said, it can't be, potatoes not called substantial. Grains are. Any question that any of this we've discussed? Any questions? Rabbi, can you actually um, repeat those five grains that you mentioned? Five types? Wheat, barley, rye, Wheat. oats, and spelt. Okay. All right. I have to. So mm -hmm. therefore, if you want to have matzah on, on Pesach, you can't have rice matzah. You can't have millet matzah. Mm -hmm. Rice is not from the five grains. So therefore, you don't make hamotzi over rice. Right. You don't bench, you have to eat rice. Mm. Okay. Well, <laughs> what about pizza? <laughs> well, pizza is, is wheat. Wheat flour. Yeah. So it's going to be hamotzi still. Well, unless if it's, if it's sweet in pizza, if it's sweet, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then it's like, it's considered to be like um, uh, cake. And cake, you don't make hamotzi over unless you eat a meal of cake. This is okay. You have, um, yeah. You fill yourself. And among things they fill yourself with includes cake also or cookies or pie. Mm. And you eat, eat an ounce of uh, pie. And then you eat mm. the kugel and kishka and some chicken, you know, all these different things that my, my father used to he used to say my father used to say that he's on a diet. He's an A diet. He only eats things beginning with an A. A piece of fish, a piece of kugel, a piece of chicken. So you start eating that, you fill yourself up with the kiddush. Yeah. Even though you didn't make hamotzi initially, you should have made hamotzi, and you shouldn't have to bench. As long mm. as you have one ounce of uh, of cake or pie or cookies, mm. and then you fill yourself up with other things, the pedigree and kishka and the like, the vegetables. Mm -hmm. Once you're full, you have to bench anyway. Right. Any other questions? Who do we have on? We have, we have Bella, Bobby, Connie, Jeremy, Nilu. Who else we got? Someone else. No, oh, no, no. Okay, no questions? All, all set? The Shabbos, the Shabbos, we blessed the upcoming month of Shvat. Shvat is the 11th month of the year. And then we have the, the extra month of the new year is right after Shvat. Because the extra month this year is and we have a leap year. A leap year in Judaism, every, every 19 years we have, seven, we have seven leap years. We had an entire month. And this way we make a correction and make sure that the solar and lunar uh, calendars are are in tandem with each other. So the X month that we had is it's called the first other, other Rishon. So Shvat will be next week, I think it's next Tuesday. And a month later is when we have that extra month called other Rishon. Right, we'll discuss that over the next week. And in the meantime, have a great week. You now the issue of the New Year's, um, People will miss most people in New Year's. It's not our New Year's, it's uh, the second New Year's. There's no prohibition of saying that. But um, you know, when you're dealing with people in the second world, if you don't wish them a New Year, they get insulted. <laughs> even though it's, even though it's uh, we have, as Jewish people, we have our New Year's. We celebrate. Yeah. I remember living in the in New York, in the Bronx, uh, New Year's was always uh, one of the things, 12 o'clock, it was dangerous in certain communities. They had a lot of, a lot of gunshots went out. Most, the city was pretty drunk. But when I was in New York, living in New York, the only day that the mass transit basically came to a standstill 
at least in the beginning, New Year's morning, was, was always New Year's. That's when um, people were just drunk. Yeah. Yeah, stay home safely. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. Be healthy, everybody. Yes, we're good. Thank you, Rav. Thank you. Shalom. Have a good Shabbos. Give me back to my daughter, please. All right, I will. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. My pleasure. Thank you.